Welcome. Today I want to provide a product review of this River Portable Lithium Power Bank by Echoflow. I backed this on Indiegogo uh, last year and uh, have had it now a couple of months which has given me an opportunity to get an idea for what it's like. We're all familiar with um, lithium power banks. Many of you will have one of these which uh, were used to uh, charge um, smartphones, tablets, etc. And they have USB ports. The river is quite similar in many regards and actually in many ways based on the same technology and the same types of uh, lithium batteries inside. Main difference is this is 100 watt hours, this is 412 watt hours, so four times as big. But more importantly, it, this has a sig much wider array of power output types than USB ports. So for instance, it will do 12 volts and 240 volts. Let me just give you a bit of an overview of the specifications of the, of the unit. As I said, it was, it's 412 watt hours, which is pretty substantial allow you to do a lot of charging before you need to uh, charge it back up. Weighs in at five kilos and as you can see uh, it's very portable. It's a nice form factor on it. I've got a link to the site so you can have a, uh, a, a better look at the detailed specifications there. But let me just give you a bit of a picture of the uh, outputs that it provides. So first of all on the front we've got two standard 2.4 amp USB ports. We have two quick charge 2.4 amp USB ports. We have two USB-C ports. We have two 12 volt ports based on the standard 5.5 mil DC jack. And uh, this is used for things like LED strips and you know, a wide variety of things that take, take that output. It has a power button on the front which is used to power it on. And if you hold that in for a second or so, the unit powers up. It has this beautiful OLED display on the front and is quite visible in, even in uh, quite bright sunlight conditions. The OLED display uh, gives the user a range of information, most importantly what the current capacity of the battery is from 0 to 100 percent. It shows how many hours the device will be able to uh, operate at the current power usage. It then shows you how much power has been consumed cumulatively across all the output ports because actually you can use all the ports together which is um, quite impressive. Let's have a look at the back. So on the back in the middle we have the standard 12 volt uh, cigarette type car port. Next to it we have a button which turns on the inverter and that will enable 240 volts on these two uh, AC outputs. This is a 300 watt inverter, 600 watt peak. That's actually quite a decent size inverter. The other jack here is the input jack. Now this is a really quite important um, jack and enables this to be charged from a wide variety of sources. First off is the plug pack that it comes with which is standard uh, power brick and basically is 12 volt DC out which plugs into the input port. The other uh, plug which it actually comes with is standard cigarette lighter again to that six and a half mil um, um, plug which will go on the input port and you can plug this into your car for instance. And I think uh, 
you know, it, it takes that would take about um, six hours to charge uh, on, on on a car on a car, I think. Um, the uh, other option is solar, and this is probably the most unique feature of this product is that that input port can actually take uh, an input anywhere between 10 and 22 volts. So it's very versatile. Uh, and I've successfully uh, hooked up portable uh, folding solar panel like this, which is about, uh, you know, uh, 100 watts, really. I think about 80, 100 watts. And, it, and I just lay it out and I plug it into that input port and it does a great job. Earlier I had it plugged in and it was um, putting 50 watts uh, into the, into the uh, battery bank. I think it's, you know, since I, I've used it in a range of different contexts now uh, and been very happy with it each time I've used it. We had a power outage uh, only a week or so ago when we had friends over and hooked up this uh, portable 60 litre fridge. Uh, and ran an LED strip, the fridge, and actually a domestic uh, fan, uh, you know, a sort of, you know, fans that you have in your household, uh, off the 240, ran them all simultaneously, very comfortably for six, for six hours. Uh, they're just great to have as an emergency um, power backup, you know, in a, in a power failure. But the uses for it are as wide and diverse as your imagination and context. Camping is an obvious one. Pop this in your tent, put the solar cell out. Uh, you can charge all your devices, uh, run your lights, and uh, you know, throughout the day with the solar cell, you'll be able to, to uh, put back the energy in that you, that you, that you used. The great thing is you can use it while you're charging as well, which is, I think, is a, is a great feature of it. It's got full overcurrent protection, uh, so you can't you can't damage it by exceeding uh, uh, loads. Probably the most common one would be for people to put an AC device on there that exceeds the 300 watts. Well, it won't damage it. Um, so it's very well protected. I think the other thing is uh, it is a really nice looking unit. It's you know very very attractive, very robust, and actually the build quality is really excellent. I, I feel it doesn't feel cheap and nasty, although it is you know it's plastic, but it, it certainly doesn't feel cheap and nasty. Very nice product indeed. Improvements? Well, I have to say, I I don't I don't uh, have too many um, criticisms, criticisms of it. I, I don't have the solar cells that uh, Echo Flow sell. I think they have a 20 watt solar cell that they, that they, that they uh, distribute and a 50 watter. I think a 20 watt is probably not sufficient. Um, be okay if you're wanting to just top it up because you've been, you've been charging some, one charging some f um, smartphones and the like. But if you're running anything substantial, uh, you know, like this fridge, for instance. You, I think the 50 watt would be would be the way to go. Uh, I think the OLED display is beautiful. I'd like to see it display a little more information. I'd like to be able to see some cumulative values that each port has consumed over a given time period. I'd like to be able to see how many watt hours, for instance, have come in via the solar. I'd like to be able to know whether, you know, what I'm consuming at this moment exceeds or is lower than the input to the device. So that would be nice. Um, but, you know, I'm sure there are things that could be easily fixed with firmware down the track. And this, you know, obviously this is the first, first iteration. I think the size to power ratio really hits a sweet sweet spot. I mean, 412 kilowatt, uh, 412 watt hours is quite quite sizable, uh, but it's still uh, quite portable. So I think they got that about right. I think. So 
I have to give this product nine out of ten. I mean, it's it's, it's just fantastic, really. Um, and if if you if you are wanting a lithium power bank that you can use uh, in a wide range of context, I couldn't recommend this more highly. Cost? Well, I, it landed here in Australia with this lovely bag, uh, which is a nice addition because it keeps it nice and protected and it's got a, it's got a uh, little st over, overarm strap that you can use to carry it and it'll keep it protected in, from the moisture and the elements. Uh, so those two together landed in Australia, with, you know, including freight for about $1,100. So I grant you, <laughs> that's not, you know, it's not something that you would go out and buy flippantly but if you have a use for it, then it's good value. Uh, and and, I, and it, like I said, it, it is a quality product, which I, which I recommend. Well, that's about it, I think. Um, if, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.